Hello everyone! Welcome to our online open day here at Han University of Applied Sciences. We are really happy to have you here. Right now we're going to be talking about application, admission and housing. But before we start, let's watch a short video about it. Would you like to study at Han? In 88 seconds, we explain the steps you need to take to apply for a program at Han. Want to join us for a moment? You apply on study link and follow the various steps. Too early is better than too late, but do it at least before the application deadlines. Within one week of applying, you automatically receive an email about how to create a Han account. Once you've done that, our admissions office emails you to let you know everything we need from you. Send the details to the admissions office. Do you need to do an English proficiency test? As soon as you've scheduled it, let us know the date. Don't have all the info yet? No problem. Send us the info you do have. For example, your grades list instead of your degree certificate. When everything is complete, Han assesses your admission. If everything is in order, you receive an email with the result of your application. Did you get a positive result? Then continue with the following steps. You're halfway there. We invite you for a matching session. That's an online interview where we check whether the program matches your wishes and interests. If you are then accepted, all that is left is to pay your tuition fees. Congratulations, you're now a Han student. There are still lots of things to do before you actually start study, such as housing and planning your trip. So, right on time. Did you know that you can track the progress of your application in My Han Portal? Good luck and see you soon at Han. Questions? Go to hanuniversity.com slash admission. Hopefully this video gave you a basic idea of how this whole process works. But now let's go a bit more in detail about it with my two guests here. Hello guys, nice to have you here. Hello, so, would you like to introduce yourselves? Yeah, of course. Um, my name is Dusty Münzner. I'm a third year uh, student in Electroengineering International. And yeah, I'm originally from Germany. I'm 28 years old. A little bit older than average. <laughs> but that's only because I studied already something before. Nice. Okay. okay. I'm Mirna. I'm one of the admissions officers at Han. And admissions office is a team of four. So together with my colleagues, Erna, Caroline, and Mark, we're the admissions office. Nice. So you will be able to help us today with the topic. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so probably first we should talk about the admissions and application. Um, yeah, uh, what is the general experience usually people have? Is it difficult for them or is it easy? What would you say as a person who really has hands-on experience with that? For the students. Yeah, like do they uh, send a lot of questions about the process? Um, yes, they do. I think the video um, showed a bit like what you can expect. Mm -hmm. um, some people ask a lot of questions and some we don't hear any questions about. So it's, it's pretty different per, per student. Okay, yeah. Um, do you know what certificate um, makes a student eligible for a bachelor or master's? Yeah, yeah. For a bachelor, uh, for a bachelor's, you need a diploma at the same level as the Dutch uh, Havel, at least the Dutch Havel. And besides that, we will uh, check if you have uh, the subjects that we require for a, a bachelor. And uh, what is also important is the level of English. Uh, we expect the people to have a upper intermediate level of English. And for the master, it's a bit different because we expect a bit more uh, that they already have a bachelor uh, degree. And uh, what is most important is that the bachelor uh, is in the same field as the master they want to apply for. So for example, if they want to do the master of engineering systems, they need a bachelor in engineering, in the field of engineering. And if they want to study molecular life sciences, we expect them to already have a bachelor in life sciences or a higher laboratory uh, education. Yeah, okay. So Dusty, uh, how was your experience with uh, admissions and application? Um, personally, um, very positive. Um, I have already quite some um, experience with universities, not just in the Netherlands, and I kind of really like this concept of like this study link 
because mm -hmm. they are more or less like all universities in the Netherlands like listed and if you apply for any degree you get like straight on one website like a great overview um, you kind of can see also not just from the Han website how your process is going you actually see it also more or less like in StudioLink like they also mm -hmm. kind of send you straight away like message or email at least as much as I remember um, uh, and that was like um, really great like I must actually say it was really smooth I also did not have that many questions actually none I did not even send any email to you <laughs> <laughs> so it was for me straightforward yeah. um, at least yeah from my experience nice okay. Mirna uh, could you tell if there are any exceptions for the English proficiency certificate yes yes there is um, we normally ask for a, a, an official English proficiency test like an academic IELTS or, or Cambridge but um, we also have a diploma list you can find it on the uh, on online on the NUFIC website or from the code of conduct and uh, they studied that um, if you if your diploma um, you will obtain or you obtained is on the list um, from your secondary education then you will be exempt for the English test like for example uh, from Romania or Germany or Sweden because they study that the level of English is already at the same level mm -hmm. so for for those people we will exam examine it but um, also native speakers or if you already studied in England for two years yeah it makes sense yeah Oh yeah, I actually did not know this about um, German citizens, so I actually did the IELTS test. <laughs> but oh. it was not like, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, but it was also nice to yeah. check your English skills. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what's the sufficient score that Han asks from students applying here? Yeah, a sufficient score is uh, a passing grade, but um, for example, if you want to study chemistry, the bachelor chemistry, um, we do require good grades in the subject chemistry, so it's like A's or B's in, in high school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, another question I wanted to ask is um, in the matching. In the video, we saw this process of uh, a little interview between a student and either a Han employee or another student. And um, yeah, I wanted to ask uh, what's the purpose of that again? Like, how does it go? Yeah, I can explain a bit more about it. Um, it is a part of the application process and it is uh, to check whether or not you have a match with the bachelor course you applied for. So it's only for bachelor uh, programs and uh, it, it's, it's a bit different per program, but most of the programs choose for a questionnaire and um, uh, a Skype call. So it is with a student or with a staff member. And it's yeah, it's for the students. Most most of them like it because they can check whether or not they have uh, a correct uh, feeling by the bachelor, and they can answer question. Uh, they can ask them their questions to the students or staff members. Nice. How was it, Dusty? Ah, uh, that's actually funny because I I have experienced both sides. Because last wow. year I did like the uh, matching for the electro engineering for this year. Mm -hmm. So I guess like every international electro engineer who started this year, I think I have seen him as Guy Cole already, <laughs> <laughs> which is super fun. Um, from like as an applicant, um, it was really smooth. Like you get straight away like the feeling, like a family feeling, um, because you speak like to another student and not like to a lecturer, which um, reduces like straight away a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. I guess when when you're like um, applying for like a new position, even like in a different country, you know. Um, and this matching calls, like, I think, um, at least when I was, like, interviewing those matching calls, um, for me it was always just important to speak about, like, the intention. Because I truly believe, like, um, you can be interested in something, and I think you need to have also a little bit, like, this drive behind it. Because sometimes you just, like, yeah, you're, like, 18, and you finish high school, and you do not really know what to do. And those matching calls are, like, a great opportunity that, like, a student can give you already a lot of inside information. Um, so you can actually evaluate for yourself a little bit better if it's actually something what you really want to do for four years, and then even maybe for the rest of your life, or is it maybe, like, not the right thing to do. So I think those matching calls are really great. Yeah. In yeah. this sense. And of course, it's also really important then to also check like the English skills. Like that's what I I did also in the matching call sometimes, just to see if like the English level is more or less like um, appropriate for this course. Yeah, exactly. I also remember I had matching process, and it was very nice for me because I could 
kind of uh, shake off a little bit of the worries about going to um, the Netherlands to Han and I could ask some questions to the person and I was actually speaking to Han employee so it was a bit different for me okay. so I was a bit nervous that it's gonna affect my um, me going to Han but it didn't I would just had a friendly chat about my motivation to go study at Han and um, yeah my background why I chose this particular study and yeah it was very nice so you don't have to worry or prepare anything for that just be yourself uh, and yeah everything's gonna go smoothly um, Myrna I had another question about the technical stuff I can imagine that a lot of people have um, yeah, difficulties with understanding the payment process, especially those people who live outside the EU. So could you explain it a bit more? Yes, yes, I can. Um, it is different for uh, non-European students and for European students how the payment works. Like, for example, uh, for the non-European students, we will ask a financial guarantee payment because we need to apply for the visa, uh, which you will talk about later. And within the financial guarantee payment, there is also the tuition fee for the first year. Um, so it's already in there and um, if you are a European student and your country uses the SEPA, uh, that's the European uh, uh, bank um, transfer, you can enter your payment details through CityLink and um, 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 also for the non-European students that if they um, if they open up a bank account once they're in the Netherlands, they can um, they can choose to do that from the second year on. So uh, once you have it, you can choose to pay in one go or in installments. So that's a, that's a, uh, that's a very handy one. Yeah, yeah, that's very handy. And for the um, uh, if you do, do uh, also the European students, not all countries have it, or all countries uh, allow the di direct debit from from Han. You can transfer the tuition fee for the first year directly to Han, so it's all covered. And if you have any questions uh, about this, uh, there's more information on our website, or just send us an email. Exactly. Yeah, uh, I'm a non-European student as as well. I come from Russia, so when I was doing this whole process of payment, it was a bit complicated, of course, more complicated than for European students, but it still went fine. And uh, yeah, I've managed to figure it out. And I remember I actually sent an email because uh, my parents were paying tuition fees and they were paying it from Russia. So yeah, we needed to figure it out, but it is possible. So don't worry about that. Uh, the Han office will definitely help you. Okay. Uh, any tips or tricks <laughs> for admission and application? Dusty. Mm. Well, I would say start earlier than later. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. <laughs> That's because, a like, literally, um, in any process in life, you will have most likely like some obstacles coming <laughs> along the way or some questions popping up. And if you do everything last minute, then there is sometimes maybe not enough time to actually um, solve those issues or get clearance. So, yeah, better earlier applying than later. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's exactly my tip. Yeah. Apply, apply on time so you have enough time to complete your enrollment. Um, make sure to complete your enrollment before start so you will have access to all HAN platforms. And what I also wanted to, to say to our new students at home is uh, it is important that you graduate from your previous education. So don't, uh, uh, so also focus on that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay, and then we will round up this uh, topic of admission and application. Thank you very much for listening and hopefully we answered most of your questions. We will have a bit of an alternation right now because we will switch to the topic of housing. Um, yeah, I know that many students have questions regarding housing, where to find a place to stay, how does it all work, how expensive it is to live in the Netherlands, and right now we're going to answer your questions. So first of all, let me introduce a new person on the couch. Yes. Hello, Jeanette. Hello, hello. Well, I'm Janet from Han Housing. Uh, we are with two people working there and we are uh, dealing with all the 
the things about uh, housing and uh, to get you, to give you information about that. So, um, yeah, well, in principle, we have housing for non-European students, and the reason why is that. Uh, uh, the non-European students don't know probably yet the Netherlands and the way how to find housing. And the European ones, they know how it works in, uh, in Euro Europe. So that is why we in principle of housing for non-Europeans. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as for non-Europeans, they are um, being offered the housing by Han when yeah. they come. Yeah. And what about the European students? Is it difficult for them? Uh, it is difficult, of course, um, um, but uh, we have a list with Facebook pages and websites to find your own housing, uh, which might be of help, and otherwise we have some tips and tricks to find housing. Uh, the European ones, they will get uh, a voucher code after they paid for a financial guarantee inclusive housing. Uh, with that voucher code, they can book a room of their choice in the booking system, book your room. It is a very nice uh, system because you can enter with the voucher code and uh, afterwards you can scroll through all the rooms. And if you find something which, which suits you the best, then you can book online, you can pay online and then it's yours. <laughs> That's really nice. Okay. Um, and uh, could you maybe share more details about the accommodation? Yeah, there are in Arnhem there are four accommodations and in Nijmegen there are two. Um, uh, what they have is, what you will get is uh, an own bedroom with uh, furniture, etc. And you will share the kitchen, bathroom and toilet with a couple of other students and the number of students depends on the location. Mm -hmm. uh, that varies between uh, two other uh, students or nine other students. Yeah, that's but nice. yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, Dusty, maybe you can share your experience. Where did you live in your first year? Well, um, I must say I started way too late. <laughs> 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 I literally came like a week before I started my study, only to the Netherlands. But I'm like from Germany, as I said, so I thought, okay, it might be like super smooth and everything. But I guess it's like everywhere in Europe, like you do not really find so easily something privately. Like I was searching straight away for something private, um, not related from the university. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, so I guess the first three weeks I was staying in Airbnbs or in hostel. Um, uh, but that was fine. I kind of planned with this. And yeah, I used like Facebook groups where you could like um, see some rooms available and I went like to plenty of them and then you kind of have like uh, those like going around the, the share house and then you with a lot of other people because like a lot of people want like this one room and then you speak with them and then in the end they choose like who you um, who they want to have but in the end I decided um, because I really wanted to concentrate mainly on my study to find like a studio for myself so I was then applying there are several different um, agencies also here in Arnhem so I was just reaching out to them. Um, some of them do it for free. Some you pay like a little um, fee of like 20 euro or so, yeah. but then you get like access to their whole like facilities or websites or whatsoever. And then I actually found like a really nice place. Um, like it's a studio, 30 square meter. And because I have my own bathroom and my own uh, kitchen and my own door, I get like, um, oh, how do you go? Yeah, it's like, um, household allowance or something oh. like this so it's actually quite expensive i would say but with this allowance what i get from from the government it's like really affordable i would say nice yeah yeah well i'm a non-european student so for me it was very different in the first year when i just arrived in the netherlands my housing was arranged by han and um since i was living in nijmegen before the first year i was living there um I lived in the SSH building, which is the organization that works with Han so that they arrange housing for us. And I had my own bedroom and yeah, I shared the facilities like kitchen and bathroom with uh, the other people in my corridor. And yeah, it was kind of nice, actually. I met a lot of friends there and we had a lot of parties and it was really nice. So um, yeah, it was nice. And um, 
uh, keep in mind that after the first year you will need to arrange your recommendation yourself so don't wait till the last moment because i also waited till the last moment i remember mm -hmm. don't do that start early um yeah jeanette how early they should start you think uh, well, I should suggest you uh, to start, uh, let's say, a couple of months before. Mm -hmm. And pro if you find already a room, let's say, two months before the start of your study, that don't care, don't bother. You can um, live there and get used to uh, Arnhem or Nijmegen, uh, the city where you're going to study. And uh, you have enough time to, to, um, to settle down. So if you uh, if you have a room far before uh, you find a room far before the, the the start of the season, well, don't just accept it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, and what about the costs? Because I yeah, think the costs. Most, yeah. uh, the costs are not. Uh, they are a little bit um, um, uh, high in price because it is uh, the the prices vary uh, from uh, three sixty five till nearly five hundred a month. But that is inclusive uh, gas, water, electricity, internet or Wi-Fi. And um, those are normal prices in Holland. So uh, I can imagine that if you come from far away, that the, that the price is too, ex too very high for you. But yeah, it is, it is like it is, it is uh, the prices. So <laughs> unfortunately, it is very much expensive. Definitely. So keep that in mind when you're coming here and have e enough money for all your expenses like uh, housing, uh, food and so on. Yeah. yeah, I have one suggestion because if you uh, are coming to the Netherlands and you are a financial guarantee student, then you pay for the financial guarantee, which is including, so including uh, living costs for one year and one year housing ahead. So you paid in advance. So that is very, uh, very uh, good to know that uh, for a financial guarantee student, you are, uh, when you start here, then you are uh, fully equipped for one year if you start in September. Exactly. Yeah, that was a good thing I had because, yeah, yeah it was very, so much information, so much to arrange. And with that financial guarantee, I didn't need to worry about many things like housing. Mm -hmm. I just totally forgot about it and just moved in <laughs> when I came here. Yeah. So yeah, that was really, really handy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, student experience. <laughs> how was it living on your own and how was it to just live in the Netherlands? Oh, uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, um, I mean, I do live alone, but I live in a complex where I would guess there are maybe like a hundred studios. So it's like a big building and everyone has like his own little studio, but we have also big terrace and obviously you run into your neighbors and then you gathering together as you would do in a share um, apartment. Um, I do have a lot of experience in share apartments, but unfortunately not in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, besides that, um, living in the Netherlands is um, a really easy life, I would say. Yeah. Like once everything is settled, like with like housing and everything, like the general life is yeah, really smooth. Like I, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe to people who live like to who don't come from Europe. But even like for Europe, like the Netherlands has like uh, it's like super clean everywhere. People are friendly. Everyone speaks English. Like that's um, uh, a really big killer for my motivation to learn Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but literally like everyone, like even if you go like in the supermarket and you get like um, speak with the cashier, like literally everyone, like everyone speaks English. That's, that's true. Yeah, uh, that makes life super easy as international in the Netherlands, I would say. Um, yeah, and I mean, so far most of. The study time in the Netherlands got influenced from Corona. <laughs> True, unfortunately. But um, uh, yeah, even through Corona, it's um, kind of safe, and you still can do things and yeah. have fun. Exactly. Living. Yeah, definitely. And in the Netherlands, I remember that before Corona, because I came here, I think a bit more than half a year before this whole pandemic started. Um, so I experienced like the normal life uh, and yeah it was kind of nice because um, I was living in the dorm so um, I shared as I said the um, living space 
and um, yeah, it was very nice because we had a lot of mm, cultures there, uh, a very nice mix, and I met a lot of people from all over the world. And uh, we were just going to different Dutch cities, uh, exploring Netherlands, and uh, yeah, just kind of trying to understand the culture and maybe also understand the traits of Dutch people so that uh, we don't have difficulties with uh, intercultural communication, because that might happen, uh, be aware of that. Um, however, yeah, in general, Dutch people are very friendly. So for me, life here was very easy. And um, in general, I'd say that uh, Han can help you with uh, adapting. So you can always talk to them uh, about difficulties you might have uh, and they will support you, which was very nice for me because um, since I'm Russian, uh, I had a very different culture. Dutch people are very direct and I remember that it was very weird for me uh, when yeah. people are just like, <laughs> straight away talking about, I don't know, business, uh, about studies and asking you questions without any small talk about, without anything. And that was kind of difficult for me to adapt to that. And at the beginning, I thought that all the Dutch people are rude, but yeah, don't think that. It's not true. It's just their way of talking and they're actually very kind. So yeah, Han can definitely help you out with that. And um Give it time when you come. Give it time to settle in your new housing and to just kind of absorb everything around you. I'm sure it's going to be very nice. Okay, um, do you have maybe any tips or tricks for uh, people coming here? Um, I would say <coughs> create a good environment within your class first because you are sitting like basically with a lot of other students in the same boat, like you come from overseas or whatsoever, and everyone, like no matter how, if it's like fears or joys, like everyone ex basically experiences the same. So I think like it's really nice and important that once you arrive here, like settle down, but also create like a nice environment within your class and find out your, your first friends. Because like if you have a problem with something, it's most likely that someone else in the class has the same problem. And when Definitely. two people have the same problem, it's easier to solve than alone, you know? So that's... Teamwork. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeanette, maybe you have some tips regarding housing. Um, tips. Uh, yes. Uh, let me see. Uh, what you can do is... Um, yeah, of course, let's uh, you can follow our Facebook page and Insta uh, account. Uh, and furthermore, we also suggest uh, when you uh, are here and you don't have a room yet, then tell everyone you will meet uh, at the introduction days at your class, at your, your SECs, study career coaches, etc. So everybody who you will meet that you are in urgent need of a room. So in that case, uh, you probably find one. And if you have problems, you can always come to Han Housing and we are there for you to help. Uh, and what I told before is start looking, if you are not a financial guarantee student and a European one, start looking as soon as possible. And if you find a room, let's say, within a week, uh, then just go there and live there if you are able to and get used to everything, but don't uh, accept it. So. Yeah. yeah, don't wait for too long and no. don't search for no. too long. Yeah. Yeah, because um, at the end, everybody is searching for a room, so you're not the only one. And we have a list with fake pages and websites, but um, that is not a guarantee that you will find there a room. It might might be so that you will find a room, but it is not certain. So exactly. keep on trying and try everything to find one. Okay, perfect. I feel like now we can move on to the Q&A, because I'm sure that many people ask questions in the chat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for that I would like to thank Dusty and uh, ask Mirna to join us because, yeah, then we can give you more factual information. Thank you. <laughs> yes, meanwhile I will read the first question. Uh, would you recommend renting a place for a few months before coming to study to get used to living on your own? Um, 
Yeah, you can make a try, but uh, the thing is that probably the owner of the, the apartment uh, will um, would like to have you there for, um, let's say, half a year, one year or a longer time. So I don't think that there might be a great chance to get a room for a couple of months. It's always a longer period, yeah. but you can make a try. No, no matter what. Yeah, if you find an opportunity to do so, you can. But uh, yeah, don't think that it's like a necessity to uh, no. adapt. Yeah. No, what you can do is, for example, is uh, uh, just, uh, for example, if you go to book your room, a uh, book your room, uh, booking.com, you can find a cheap hotel, let's say in Arnhem, and just contact the hotel, ask for an extra, extra long stay with a discount. So then you can uh, used, uh, get used to Arnhem and you get started for searching for another room. That might be a possibility. Definitely. Okay, question to Myrna. Application. Do my application documents need to be translated and notary verified, Apostille? Um, we would like a translation, yeah, especially if it's from, from China or uh, uh, a language we do not, we cannot read, then we would like an uh, official translation, yes. Okay. Yeah. I remember when I was doing my documents, I had that, exactly that, the translation and the apostille. Um, I come from Russia again, so, yeah, and I remember that Han um, was helping me throughout the process because it was kind of difficult to understand how it all works, especially considering that um, the documents need to be translated uh, with like an official translator, not just anybody mm -hmm. with a <laughs> Google translator. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, kind of tricky, but Han helped me throughout the way. So yeah, if you have questions regarding that, you should definitely send them an email. Um, Okay, housing. Uh, can you provide info on useful websites, real estate agencies to help EU students find accommodation? Yes, we do have a list with Facebook pages and websites. Uh, it is very long, so you can uh, try to find and uh, f uh, you can try to find uh, searching for a room. Um, we cannot guarantee, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, just make a try. Yeah, and like I said before, tell everyone that you are looking for a room. Sometimes it is uh, you get a room through somebody you know. That there is a place, a vacant place in the house or whatever, and then uh, you will get one. Yeah, I yeah. think it's also nice to mention that in the third year, many students are going abroad. Yeah. So on a study abroad, internship. Supplementals. Yeah, yeah, you can try asking those students. Yeah. Maybe you can use their room or their apartment. Yeah. That would be a it nice It might be one. a possibility. Yeah, but it is for a short time, of course. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, while we're waiting for more questions, uh, I will probably share a bit of my experience with uh, the housing because I managed to live in both cities, it just happened this way, in uh, Nijmegen where there's first campus of um, Han and in Arnhem. Uh, where we are right now. Um, I was studying life science for half a year, so I was living in Nijmegen, and I was exactly living in that uh, student dorm, and it was called Vossenveld. Uh, it was a really, really nice one. It was placed near the river, so I can personally recommend that one. So if you're going to study in Nijmegen, really look for uh, Vossenveld. It's really pretty there, and um, also if you like jogging in the morning, there is just like a perfect path for you. You will be looking at the river on your left, at the forest on your right, and you will be just enjoying yourself in the morning. Mm -hmm. And as for Arnhem, there are also uh, many um, student housings here. Uh, however, yeah, I was already living um, with the um, yeah, apartment that I found myself through a real estate agency. So I had kind of like both types of experiences. Yeah. Um, what is a conditional acceptance? A conditional acceptance? Um, that means that, uh, for example, you still need to obtain your diploma. So we accept you. Um, um, you can apply before you obtain your diploma. So we ask for your most recent grade list so we can see uh, which diploma you will eventually get. Uh, so that the acceptance is conditional um, be, because you still need to obtain your final diploma and you have until uh, start to send us the, the final diploma. So don't worry, you can uh, already apply uh, even though you're still in your last year. 
Okay, perfect. Yeah, I see that there are not so many other questions. So, yeah, if there are no more questions, oh no, never mind. <laughs> Someone decided to ask us a question after all. Yeah. Yeah, so while we're waiting, again, um, I wanted to ask about the uh, students. Um, do many students have like questions? Like, do many students send emails with questions regarding housing and application? How mm -hmm. difficult is that process for them? Do you think? Uh, you mean um, that you finally get a room? Yeah. What for example, you can share your experience with maybe contacting the students who uh, have questions. Yes. Uh, well, um, that depends, of course, if you are a financial guarantee student or uh, a European student. A financial guarantee students will get a, f a guaranteed room for uh, one semester or two semester. That depends of uh, the moment of starting. Uh, in uh, November, in um, September, if you start in September, you will get a room for two semesters, so for one whole year. And if you start in February, there is only one semester because uh, in September uh, there will be a new uh, group of incoming students, so they need a room as well for one year. Um, so for financial guarantee students, it's quite easy, of course. Um, and for uh, European students, it is... Uh, it is uh, yeah, quite difficult to get a room, but uh, we have the experience that um, if you don't find a room yet before you start, you start it, you will find a room in the first month about uh, after your start at the Han. So finally you will get a room and in the meantime if you won't get a room you can uh, spend the night at uh, the couch of somebody you know. Uh, you, yeah, you probably will find a solution and if you can't find a solution you always can contact us and we will think with you about the situation and we will try to solve uh, your situation as well yeah. yeah we from housing also receive questions for from uh, about housing yeah. from students and uh, most questions are from students that get accepted pretty late so if you wait until the deadline which is for EU students is 15 August you, s you only have like two weeks to find a room, so that is very difficult. So I think the, the biggest tip we can give is uh, apply soon and also start looking for housing uh, early on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, really a couple of months before. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. Okay, questions. Um, how long does the application process take? When do I get the result? Oh, it can be very quick. Uh, I mean, if you apply through Studylink, uh, you will receive an email from us, from the admissions office, with all the requirements. Uh, what we need is your uh, diploma, if you have one already, or your grade list, uh, translation, uh, the English proficiency test, and your passport, so we can check if, if the diploma is really from you. And um, normally students receive that first email within one week after application through Studylink. Uh, then if you send us the documents directly, it can be the next day or within two, two days. Sometimes when we're very busy, it can be a week. Or if you have a difficult diploma that we don't know yet, it can take a bit longer. But normally it is within two weeks that you can uh, uh, expect your, your result. So. What about masters? Is it the same? The uh, master is a bit different, yes, because uh, we expect a bit more documents from them, like a CV, a motivation letter, and uh, it needs to go through the coordinator. So once we have all your documents, it goes to the board, uh, master board of admission, and they will check everything. And if if you really have the bachelor in the correct field, and you have the correct uh, motivation and so on. And uh, for some masters, they also look at your GPA. Mm -hmm. So they really check everything. And then uh, we receive the, the outcome. And uh, so I think that can take up to three weeks. Okay. Uh, usually. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what are the formalities after arriving in the Netherlands? For example, bank account, registration at City Hall, etc. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> any one of you. Yeah, uh, there are formalities uh, like uh, what is in, in the what what uh, the person already says. Yeah, you have to open up a bank account. You have to register at City Hall. If you're a non-European student, you have to get your residence permit eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and um, 
uh, sign up for your for your room. For your room, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. that stuff. Uh, there is an introduction week, uh, and one day is for especially for international students, where they can get all the information uh, about this on how to open up a bank account and and so on. And um, I think they also receive uh, beforehand the emails with the information, so they already know a bit more on. Uh, how the process works. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. I remember I had this uh, introduction week and I remember when I just arrived in the Netherlands, I just didn't know anything, obviously, because I've been here only once before that as a tourist. And I didn't know anything about how to arrange things, Where what is city hall. I was just <laughs> an absolute newbie, but everything was explained, so that was really nice. And if you want to know more information about the residence permit and about all this visa stuff, then um, join our talk about visas and scholarships. I have one other thing about housing. Ah. Uh, if you uh, arrive in the Netherlands, of course you would like to go into your room. Uh, therefore, we organized some introduction days. Before the corona, uh, we had an introduction day at the Han in Arnhem and Nijmegen, but unfortunately that is not possible at this moment. So we arranged another thing, which is that you can go directly to uh, the Helix building in Arnhem. Uh, that is the pick-up place for the key, and you will get uh, a lot of instructions, etc. Uh, but after that you have to go by a taxi um, to your dormitories, spread it over Arnhem. And the same is in Nijmegen, you, will, you can get to the headquarters of the SSHN, um, which is the rental company from which we are renting out the rooms. And they have an uh, opening hours uh, during the week from uh, 10 till half past five. So there you can make an appointment to pick up the key to your room. Perfect. So that is uh, about housing. <laughs> there is one last question about housing, actually. Okay. What is the average size of a room? Ooh, uh, well, there are very small rooms, let's say uh, 10 square meters, and there are some of uh, 20. So that is in between. Yeah, that really depends on the location. Yeah, however, I must say that I was living in a pretty small room, but it was enough. Like, there was the yeah, bed, everything is inside. Yeah, the yeah. table, everything, yeah. it's yeah. completely furnished. Yeah. So, I just moved in and everything was already ready. Yeah. You can maybe move some stuff if you want to have yeah. your personal vibe in your room. But, yeah, in general, it's enough. So. Yeah, and remember, it is it's only your bedroom, uh, which is your private room. And you have the, the kitchen and you can... You can knock on the doors of your uh, fellow uh, uh, students, so yeah. you have enough space around you. For sure. Yeah. Okay, I see another question coming up. This one is about application this time. Um, okay. Will an internship during high school be an added advantage? Um... I think so for your bachelor that, that uh, it is it is nice to have uh, for your, for our application process. It doesn't matter if you have it or not. We will not ask for it. But um, in a um, bachelor degree of an applied sciences, you will do uh, internships and uh, researches. So I think it is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, that you have experience, so you already kind of know what to expect yes. in the uh, yeah later years of your study. So many questions, wow. Okay. What comes with the room for housing? Like, what, I don't, what comes like with the, the room? Yeah, like yeah. furniture, bedding, what comes oh, with it? Oh, that's kind of, uh, well, um, yeah, of course your bed. Uh, there is a small table with a chair. There is the cupboard. Um, you can uh, book online. Uh, you can uh, like kitchen utensil set and uh, bed liner, etc. But you can bring it also uh, at your own. So um, yeah, that is, it, that is it. Yeah. Nice. I forgot to tell because I spoke about the financial guarantee students because uh, they are a very large group um, in in our housing procedure. But we also have guaranteed housing for exchange students and for uh, master students. So that yeah, I forgot to, to tell know. you. Yeah, that's a good thing to know. Yeah. Okay. Now I don't see any more questions. So okay. thank you very much for asking. Thank you, thank you for joining this. Thank you guys thank for you answering too. all yeah. the questions. Yeah, I'm sure it was very helpful for prospective students. Yeah. And yeah, we can round up this okay. thing. 
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.